1994 case out of Ohio Court of Appeals, Lightman v. WLW JCOR Communications. The, um, the Ohio court considers two issues when a anti-smoking advocate brings a charge um, of battery which is dismissed by a lower court, then he complains and on appeal, um, the Ohio court considers whether or not this, um, this event is a actionable claim for battery, but moreover, if it should have been dismissed um, under a federal rule of civil procedure that um, will come up soon. What happens is uh, a person connected with a TV network on some kind of anti-smoking holiday um, deliberately blows, deliberately and repeatedly blows smoke from his cigar into a anti-smoking advocate's face, intending to humiliate him um, against his objections, of course. Um, the anti-smoking advocate um, brings suit and it is dismissed under the battery charges dismissed um, at the lower court level on the grounds that they doubt he would prevail. First question is, was that an appropriate use of the federal rule of civil procedure 12B6? And it is not. The court finds that that rule is really for cases where a plaintiff can't establish or prove the facts that would lead to the actionable claim. This is not a case of that. We know the facts and we don't doubt the facts. This is like, um, like the court said, more of a situation where the court probably doubted that he, he had a good chance of winning. So no, you can't dismiss the, um, the charge. The plaintiff slash appellee, sorry, the plaintiff slash appellant, Lightman, is going to succeed on the second part of his complaint, which was that, that decision by the lower court. The second decision The, the second thing the court considers is the appellee's liability for battery given these circumstances. Um, is what the TV person did battery? Well, the court says, they're looking at the restatement second of torts this time, and they're looking at battery, and the second element of battery is um, that a harmful contact results. So they know that the contact happened, um, they know the first and third elements, but the, the second they're going to question and talk about. The harmful or offensive con contact, each of those three words is really important. They first look at harmful, offensive, and they say, yes, this is offensive. And then they see, is this contact? And I think this is when they talk about McCracken, where um, and kind of the idea that smoke cannot be a capable of contact because it's like ethereal and um, you can see through it and such. But this court says that smoke can make contact, that it's a particular particulate, and it's um, and it's also not secondhand or like passive smoking like prior cases had looked at. So yes, um, the second element is satisfied. This would probably need to be tried by a trial court again on that part of the law. The judge, the court, uh, the court laments that there's not an uh, outside court forum for trivial, for mediating trivial disputes between citizens. But um, tort law is supposed to keep us from doing things um, to each other in a society that are undesirable. And so to this. Um, to this problem, we don't have an answer yet. The complaint brought by the appellant is um, remanded. This, the first and third are held up. At the, in the matters of the first and third complaint, the appellate court affirms the trial court's decisions. But in the second, he uh, the court dismisses. In in the second, challenging the trial court's dismissal of the battery charge. Um, the case is reversed and remanded back 1994 case out of Ohio Court of Appeals.